Okay, thank you. And I want to thank the organizer for inviting me to this really wonderful conference. So following uh, Ron's talk, what I would like to show you now that uh, car molecules can have profound effects also on the properties of superconductors inducing uh, unconventional superconductivity. We believe the triplet superconductivity and magnetic related uh, uh, state upon absorption. Now this work was done uh, in collaboration with Yossif Paltiel and Shiva Yochedis from his group that was in charge of uh, all the chemical aspects of the work and uh, handled over the years by these excellent graduate students. And I had wonderful collaborations uh, with these uh, people. And uh, since essentially uh, this talk is uh, off the mainstream of what we heard so far, so I still want to connect it first in the few first slides to the physics that I guess everyone already know. Uh, that first of all, we know that in the turn of the century, so uh, Bergeret, Fetov, and Volkov predicted that uh, odd frequency triplet superconducting correlations can be induced uh, at the ferromagnetic and superconducting side uh, of a, an interface, uh, provided that there is uh, some inhomogeneity you know, which is needed to uh, get spin full uh, um, triplet uh, pairs, that is, uh, equal spin. Uh, uh, Cooper pairs. In order to get M equals zero, it's enough to have a, a magnetic activity of uh, these materials. So these combinations of magnetic active uh, interface and the uh, inhomogeneity or non-collinearity at the surface, either at the interface or at the grain boundaries, uh, is essential. So now let me just again reiterate what uh, was said before uh, in previous talks that uh, the Cooper pair function must obey anti-fermionic uh, anti-symmetrization, fermionic anti-symmetrization. And since we are talking about a, a triplet pair, so we have an even function in spins. So now we have a few options. If uh, we have a odd parity like P wave or F wave, so then we should they have a even frequency superconductivity, which is the conventional one. And uh, if we have a, a even orbital, a even a party like S a wave or D wave. So then we should have odd frequency superconductivity, which means that the Cooper pairs change their sign upon exchanging their time coordinates. Now, uh, Eschling and Lefvander treated the, uh, say, uh, the case of an, uh, a half metallic uh, ferromagnet uh, coupled to a superconductor in the presence of non-collinearity at the interface. And what they found that uh, superconducting triplet correlations are induced in both sides, that's weird. and they should have a mixture of a predominantly odd frequency S wave and an even frequency P wave. Now, there were various transverse experiments that uh, essentially confirmed uh, the prediction for uh, the induction of uh, triplet superconductivity. First, there were a, a Josephson junction experiments where people have found long range spin polarized uh, Josephson currents that confirmed the prediction, but uh, usually uh, the supercurrent extended over a few nanometers is much larger than uh, what uh, the conventional prediction from the FFLO predicts, which is less than not, not one nanometer. Now, one thing that was missing in these experiments, and this is where we came in, that the order parameter uh, symmetry was not directly identified. And for this, one can apply tunneling or conduction spectroscopy. So we heard a lot of talks about uh, STM and uh, tunneling spectroscopy, but they really focused on the uh, situation where the barrier between the normal metal and the super, the normal metal and the superconductor, in many cases, it was superconductor and superconductor, is a strong uh, barrier. So we really have the bona fide tunneling. And this is what we see here. We have the gap and a coherence peak. We saw only the positive side of the junction. But of course, as you all know, we can also look at the other extreme regime where the metal is in a good electrical contact with the superconductor, that the barrier is in, uh, transparent. And then within uh, the gap, we see doubling of the uh, current of the conductance rather than a gap. And this is due, of course, to the Andreev reflection. And we have all the regime between this uh, pure Andreev reflection and a tunneling regime. And uh, the transition from what we call the uh, Andreev spectroscopy to the tunneling takes place in Z equals one, where Z is a dimensional a parameter which uh, quantifies the strength of the barrier. This is within the celebrated uh, Blondel, Tinkham, and the Club Lake theory. Now, all this holds for a uh, conventional S-wave superconductors. 
But when the high TC superconductors was, uh, were discovered, realizing that the order parameter had D-wave symmetry, so of course this should be modified. And this was really the groundbreaking work of uh, Tanaka and Kashiwaya that uh, um, predicted uh, how should be the tunneling spectra uh, uh, when measured on the uh, anisotropic superconductors with the sign changing at the Fermi energy. And this also applies, first of all, to D-wave. The same thing happens to P-wave. And the hallmark of a uh, tunneling spectroscopy and also on draft spectroscopy uh, to uh, these uh, kind of uh, anisotropic uh, superconductors is the appearance of zero bias uh, conductance peaks. Now, zero bias conductance peak can also uh, appear for odd frequency S wave, but I will not talk about this uh, much. So following this consideration, what we started studying this was done in collaboration with uh, Robinson and Gatko and from the Technio that supplied us with excellent bilayer materials. So first of all, uh, we depo they deposited uh, the half uh, uh, metallic ferromagnet LCMO on top of uh, the high temperature superconductor PCCO. This is one example. And the thickness of the LCMO is 50 nanometers, what much larger by more than an order of magnitude then the expected penetration depth of superconducting correlation into the ferrog uh, magnet according to the FFLO prediction. But yet in the tunneling spectrum, we found this pronounced zero bias conductance peak. They tell us that we have a triplet pairing. Again, it could be S, a odd frequency S wave or even frequency P wave or a combination of them. But when we apply the strong enough magnetic field that is above the saturation field uh, of uh, LCMO, so this uh, peak vanished and essentially what we've got is a tunneling spectrum that corresponds to a regular uh, metal. And this shows us the role of non-homogeneity uh, non at the interfaces, which is needed to, uh, for the appearance of a uh, triplet superconductivity. And you all, we also observed the inverse effect that is induction of superconducting correlation to an S-wave superconductor deposited on top of LCMO. Again, in zero magnetic field, we found the zero bias conductance peak within a gap. When we applied magnetic field above the saturation field of LCMO, so we found this uh, S-wave uh, spectra. And again, the role of uh, non-homogeneity was demonstrated. And such an effect also demonstrated by different of uh, induction of kind of ferromagnetism or triple superconductivity in the S-wave superconductor was demonstrated also by other uh, groups. So now then we asked ourselves if there are other, uh, maybe simpler ways to achieve triplet and or P-wave superconductivity. Now in this talk, I uh, will uh, concentrate on our works on carbon molecules, as I said before, that can be absorbed of different type of uh, conventional S-wave superconductors. And I'll show you the profound effect they have on the superconducting properties. And there was another work that was already mentioned in this conference where we found, uh, again, in collaboration with the Cambridge group, that by uh, placing a single layer graphene on this high temperature superconductor, so we can uh, induce a P wave superconductivity, but it is probably odd frequency P wave singlet and not even frequency, but I will not uh, take uh, talk about that. So now let me move to the main part of the talk. And again, which is the title of the talk that we found magnetic like states and triple superconductivity induced by car molecules uh, uh, on a, a superconductor. So the first set of experiments that I will show is the STM experiment where we deposit carbon molecules on yeah. various types of superconductors, mainly niobium. Then I will uh, show results optimal, uh, measured on devices in conductance uh, spectroscopy where we exfoliated niobium selenide, placed them on pre uh, electrodes. This work was done in collaboration with uh, Steinberg. And we had another work in which uh, we deposited carbon molecules on iodium when they connected uh, through a graphene layer, a protection layer to a gold electrode. And also here we found indication for triplet superconductivity, but I don't think that I would have time to show that. So again, the motivation for uh, looking for some special effect that the uh, carbon molecules have on superconductor stems from uh, the car induced uh, car, uh, spin selectivity effect that Owen described so nice about, but less from the uh, transport properties. Uh, we were, uh, I was at least, and I guess also you all see the previous experiment, we were inspired by uh, the, what we may call uh, the equilibrium measurement, where you'll see deposited 
in a patterned way, coral molecules on top of a nickel, unmagnetized, not magnetized nickel, with two uh, types of uh, nanosomer, the left-handed and the right-handed. The topography looked the same, or then I won't present it in the talk, I just uh, follow that. And again, then when we measured, and Yossi measured, uh, using a magnetic force microscopy, what he found that uh, uh, magnetization in the induce, is induced in the nickel, which was, again, to begin with, not magnetized, in different direction, depending on the uh, uh, handiness of the two molecules. In another experiment that was performed in Yossi's group, they estimated that the spin collect uh, selectivity, at least in the, for the alpha helix polyalanine molecule, which we're using all our experiments, is something between 60 and uh, 75%, and this may be important for the work. Now, in the first experiment, as I showed before, so again, we deposit current molecules on niobium, and this is what uh, uh, we see here. So the adsorption here was not perfect, and it was not controlled. Now we are uh, doing experiments where uh, aiming to do experiments where it will be more controlled, and I will talk about it later. So, and some parts of the uh, surface, we found regions with no molecules at all, and here you can see the atomic step of a uh, uh, niobium, but in some we could see clear evidence for uh, car molecules. And we, if you look at the topographic cross section, in this case, in, in a region which is a, a normal to their uh, alignment. So, and the, we also took uh, images in cross section uh, along. And we, by this STM measurement, we found that uh, they really uh, conform with the uh, length and width of these molecules, but it appeared that they are tilted by about 50%. A 50 degrees, which is uh, what is usually found. Now, on a bare niobium field that uh, has was not treated chemically at all, we find this nice uh, superconducting gap. But when we placed the STM tip on uh, regions with, uh, where shows uh, where uh, chiral molecules were deposited, the picture is a uh, vast uh, turns vastly different. We find anomalous uh, tunneling spectra where we have, in what, for example, in this case. We have zero bias conductance peaks, which are embedded uh, inside the gap structures, and in some cases, even more pronounced peaks uh, embedded inside the gap-like features, not that we don't see here at the conductance uh, peaks. So essentially, uh, the co uh, coherence peaks. Uh, so essentially, this tells us that really something non-trivial happens to the super conductivity upon absorption of uh, these molecules. And now we try fitting our data to an arsenal of different uh, order parameters uh, that we could find. So the best fits were uh, to uh, this uh, car P wave uh, uh, superconductivity that is given here, which is spin full and not spin less. And we also try to fit it to a uh, spin less uh, uh, P wave superconductivity, for example, the one that uh, was predicted by uh, Fu and Kane in the case of a uh, junction between a superconductor and a topological insulator, they could not fit. Also, just taking PX or PY could not do the job. And these really, we can get relatively nice fits, and we could, but we could also fit them also with a combination of D-wave uh, and S-wave. But we think that the P-wave uh, essentially is more uh, related to uh, the previous findings of Yossi Paltier because the relative a weight of the P-wave component is uh, comparable to the spin selectivity that uh, was found in his experiments uh, for uh, a polyalanine uh, molecule. But I will show later also magnetic field dependence that I think rules out the possibility of D-wave uh, superconductivity. And of course, uh, people argue that P-wave is uh, not stable with respect to this earlier, but if we have coupling between P-wave and S-wave that can essentially stabilize uh, the P-wave uh, order parameter. So of course we did uh, many uh, control experiments. In one of them, uh, we uh, deposited non chiral disalane molecules that were uh, dissolved in exactly the same uh, solution uh, with the ethanol. And uh, we did not find here any evidence for any unconventional uh, superconductivity and the tunneling spectra could be fit uh, well uh, taking care, uh, of course, in uh, consideration of the temperature, a uh, lifetime broadening to a uh, order parameter, uh, uh, to a uh, uh, S-wave order parameter with a gap of uh, 1.2 uh, million electron volt. So essentially, the car molecules really uh, change the order parameter symmetry. Then we tried another experiment. We tried to see what happens uh, for a proximity, a proximity superconductivity. Uh, 
So it's, I guess, old hope. If we deposit a, a, deposit a metallic field on a, a sewer and S-wave superconductor or a, any other superconductor, super, superconducting correlations are reduced uh, in the normal metal. And this is due to the under uh, reflection, for example, a whole like quasi-particle in pitches, retroreflected as an electron like a quasi-particle and Cooper bearing effect is transmitted from S to N, but these are not genuine bona fide uh, Cooper pairs, but rather correlated electron hole pairs and the correlation or phase coherence maintains over uh, the length scale, like finite energy at least over the thermal length, which is, uh, has this expression. And we still try to see if we have the same effect on the order parameter also in this case, and indeed we found, so first of all, when we looked at the bare uh, gold surface, we found this uh, very uh, uh, tunneling spectra, which uh, correspond to a, a proximity superconductor. And again, when depositing uh, current molecules, so we see that uh, again, we find zero bias conduction peaks uh, here within gaps. And also here, when we uh, try to fit uh, the data, so the best fit that we can get was to this uh, PX plus uh, IPY order parameter. And, uh, but again, we could also get a good uh, fit also to S plus D pairing. And uh, in order to try to discriminate between uh, these two possibilities, so we looked at uh, uh, the effect of a magnetic field. And uh, this is one example, I'll show a more example, uh, another example later. And what we see here that by applying magnetic field, so there is zero uh, bias conductance peak uh, reduces, but uh, does not split. And this is inconsistent for D-wave superconductivity because in the case of D-wave superconductivity, we have shown in also other groups, uh, Laura Green and uh, Guy Deutscher, that uh, in this case, the zero bias conductance split uh, splits, but it is consistent with P-wave superconductivity that uh, again, in one of the papers of uh, Tanaka, uh, that uh, these, uh, the amplitude of these uh, zero bias conductance peaks uh, may reduce. Then we ask ourselves whether the chirality by itself is necessary or also the helicity to have kind of a long helical molecules. So here uh, we deposited uh, cysteine molecules which have exactly the same uh, bonding uh, uh, configuration. Uh, at least it is bonded by the same uh, thiol group as uh, the polyalanine molecule. And in this case, we found that there is uh, no effect on the uh, superconducting properties. So it appears that helicity may be essential, not only the chirality, and this may be uh, related to uh, things that uh, also uh, Ron Aman showed before, uh, that combination maybe of, I'll talk about it later, of spin orbit uh, coupling and uh, spin blockade, that uh, the long molecules may have more than the short uh, molecules. So now there are still uh, many open questions at this stage. For example, what is the mechanism by which the car molecules can affect the S-wave superconductivity? And uh, one question that we ask ourselves and also ask uh, others ask us when they found this previous data is whether the spin polarization due to current passing through the molecules is essential for uh, observing uh, these uh, unconventional order parameter, or maybe the chemical bonding is necessary and by this some transient effect that takes place that uh, 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 will uh, result in this uh, spin uh, polarization that uh, uh, also Ron Aman talked before. And of course, we wanted to, to check the magnetic and temp field and temperature dependence of the emergent unconventional superconductivity. And for this, we wanted uh, to use the other type of reaction. So in this case, what we did is uh, we took uh, exfo exfoliated niobium uh, selenide uh, flakes, you know, it's a Van der Waals uh, material, with super which shows superconductivity, and we placed them on a pre-patterned, uh, prepared uh, gold electrodes, either directly or on top of a coral uh, molecule layer that was uh, pre-adsorbed on top of these uh, gold electrodes. And when looking at uh, uh, the conductance spectra that uh, we found, and the current molecules deposited directly. So we found the whole regime between what I said before, the pure tunneling regime where we see hard gaps and the Andreev spectroscopy regime, but again, with no indication for something unconventional, but this is not surprising. 
when we looked at the uh, conduction spectra applied on uh, this uh, flake cover molecules gold a junction so again we saw most of the junction showed hard gaps which because we are probably in the tunnel regime in some of them we have a uh, soft gaps probably the junction did not have that uh, large uh, uh, the, such a small transparency but uh, when we performed the same experiments as we did before we absorbed the uh, car molecules and again which is the chemisorption on top of the niobium flakes we did see these unconventional feature appearing uh, inside the gap so it appeared that indeed the uh, chemical bonding is necessary for uh, these uh, unconventional superconducting properties uh, to appear just let me remind uh, something that you have, I think, al already heard in the talk of uh, Peter Lilliroth in the first day. So niobium salinate is a two-gap semiconductor. If we, uh, the two gaps can appear here. If we take the derivative of that, we can uh, clearly see. Now there is a signature of uh, Ising superconductivity even in the layers, not in the monolayers that we work in. I will show it later. And uh, again, uh, it was shown in this paper that uh, due to that uh, in such materials, mm. uh, P wave. Hello? Hello? Fine, fine, continue. <laughs> Manishma. Hello? Okay, so if we have uh, in this material, so P wave uh, <laughs> super contact. I'm going to tell you And if, if we have P wave super contact, it comes out to S wave, so the P wave in this case uh, can be robust. So the first experiment that we have uh, prepared here is uh, again in the flake uh, gold junction. So here we find, here is an optical image of the flake. So again, we found a, a, a conventional a tunneling gap, but uh, upon its option of car molecules, but this was from a dilute solution. So the car molecules are separated by one another. We cannot estimate exactly, but uh, on the order of the coherence like probably. So what we see here that instead of a zero bias conductance peak, we find a set of uh, ingap states which are symmetrically positioned around the uh, zero bias. And when you apply magnetic fields, so we see that uh, these uh, uh, states uh, drift uh, apart and we have, but also this uh, curved behavior that we do not, not always we observe it. Sometimes there is no curved uh, behavior like that in uh, other uh, molecules. And this really reminds us uh, in other experiments. And this really reminds us of what we've heard in the first talk of the conference from uh, 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 Katrina that uh, we have a, a YSR a bands uh, forming here. And um, the reason that we have multiple bands, which was found also for manganese atoms in some cases, that we may have a various uh, molecule tilt angles that we may vary the coupling of the molecules to the uh, electron uh, states in uh, the niobium. Uh, and maybe also the fact that we have two band superconductivity may also contribute to these uh, multiple uh, um, uh, YSR or uh, Yushiba Rusinov states that. Uh, uh, Funke uh, uh, described so well in her uh, first talk. So just let me remind uh, her talk to so those that uh, did not listen. So uh, when we have a, a magnetic impurity deposited uh, on top of a superconductor, so it may um, couple uh, to uh, the uh, spin of the ferromagnetic. So this uh, coupling can compete against uh, the uh, superconducting coupling between the pairs uh, uh, of the electron and, uh, and if the exchange coupling is significant enough so it could break the Cooper pairs and uh, what will happen here is that they will have uh, two states which uh, will be appear in the gap of the superconducting condensate and the position of this state can be estimated by this equation and we treat uh, in a, we can treat in the case of uh, classical uh, spins and I will also remind the uh, very nice experiment that were done uh, by Peter Lilleroth when he absorbed the uh, magnetic molecules, but these are magnetic molecules. The car molecules are not mag magnetic. So he found even multiple, uh, single or multiple, depending on the distance between uh, the molecules, a uh, uh, Shiva Usinov states uh, in the gap. So we tried to model this uh, system that we have. So we treated the, the uh, 
superconductor we're using a tight binding mean freak uh, anatonian but we had an exchange interaction between the uh, spins uh, deposited uh, placed on a, an array and again we treated here uh, the spins as a classical spins and uh, the only thing that we added you know also to uh, mimic uh, this curvature that we had another random component uh, that can vary for the uh, spin that can vary with magnetic field. Now, essentially, this is a, also a consistent with experiments that uh, also Yossi have done that he showed that by applying magnetic fields, so also the current molecules can uh, somewhat tilt, so until some uh, saturation field. So uh, again, we can kind of reproduce qualitatively, qualitatively the experimental results uh, that we have here, and this is the, the transport uh, formalism that they've used, which is quite conventional. Um, now, uh, one thing that's a nice result that we obtained, because if we are talking, of course, about, about magnetic state, that so some magnetic hysteresis should be observed. And uh, indeed here, when we looked at the uh, conductance spectra and we uh, sweep the field from minus two to plus uh, two, a Tesla, so we see that uh, the states are positive and a negative bias, if you want a whole electron-like or whole-like state, converge at uh, some energy, at some uh, magnetic field of about uh, 200, a few uh, 100 milli, uh, uh, milli Tesla. And, uh, but when we apply the field in a reverse direction, so we see that the conversion takes place at negative magnetic field. So again, this is another uh, observation that tells us that uh, indeed magnetic states uh, are induced. So now we uh, go back to what we uh, did before when we have dense molecular absorption. So in this case, we we're close uh, to the Andreev spectroscopy regime. And what uh, we find uh, here is that, uh, of course, be, uh, above TC, we don't see uh, any special features in the uh, conductant uh, spectra. At some temperature, at the onset of superconductivity, we start seeing this dome, which is what you expect uh, for a S-wave superconductor, not in the tunnel regime, but in some intermediate regime between Andreev and a tunneling. But then the, sorry, but then the surprising effect that at a somewhat lower temperature, we can see that a zero bias conductance peak, a very sharp one starts appearing and its magnitude saturates at about 1.3 Kelvin, we went down to a 50 uh, milli Kelvin. So it appears that there is some unconventional uh, order parameter component that appears not at TC, but at some temperature uh, well below TC, two degrees uh, below or so, which is quite uh, distinct uh, from uh, the appearance of superconductivity. Then we also they performed a magnetic field dependence. And uh, again, that was at the lowest temperature, I think that we measured uh, 50 milli K. And uh, going close to the interesting part, we found that uh, when increasing the magnetic field, so the zero bias conductance peak disappears and giving a uh, way to a gap. And also here for in-plate magnetic field, and here the, uh, we found that the zero bias conductance peak again uh, vanishes, giving itself to a, a gap, which looks like a normal gap. So again, also here we see that uh, the induced order parameter component vanishes uh, well below uh, the, uh, uh, cri uh, the uh, critical magnetic field. Here, the parallel magnetic field that is above 15 uh, Tesla. And again, this is kind of an indication for um, uh, using superconductivity also for uh, our flakes. So the possible scenario that you can think about is that uh, when we go from uh, the situation of long de the density absorption, we have discrete uh, Y's R states. And when we increase the density, so what we may find is what's called a Shiba glass. glass. Now, we don't believe that uh, the magnetic, effective magnetic moments of, of all these current molecules. And again, I want to stress that uh, to begin with, they are not magnetized. Something happens upon absorption because we did test it in a squid magnetometer that they are not magnetized to begin with. Only the adsorption does some kind of charge transfer that uh, makes them uh, act as magnetic impurities. And even in this case, uh, but the, they may have, uh, they are not ordered, we believe, so may have uh, random magnetizations, but yes, a Shiba glass is found. And I think it was in this paper that they found that also in this case, 
a corollary edge state can be performed. So maybe this is a, what we see in our experiments, but of course, this has be, have to be further verified. So the possible directions for explaining uh, the triplet pairing formations, so it can be related directly to the spin selective property that uh, um, Ron discussed uh, before, and I mentioned also in this, uh, uh, at the beginning of the talk, and here indeed the relative weight of the P-wave component is uh, comparable to the spin selectivity. And more importantly, we see that the molecules act as magnetic import, uh, impurities, and therefore uh, they form a spin active uh, boundary condition that is enough es essentially to induce some uh, triplet order. It may be related to a uh, works, uh, theoretical works of Bokov and Rashba and Edelstein. I think it's even called the Edelstein effect where a combination of singlet and the triplet, a pre-wave superconductivity uh, can uh, occur in, uh, for example, in a two-dimensional su uh, superconductor that lacks inversion symmetry in the presence of a uh, Rashba spin orbit scattering. And also the same, similar configuration also by uh, Edelstein, but here we consider the, the interface between a superconductor and a non-superconductor and uh, emit a metal. And here I just want to remind that the uh, carbon molecules probably have some spin orbit coupling, the degree of which we still don't know when we have, we plan uh, to study this. The uh, experiments are starting, uh, are ongoing. But of course, uh, further experiments unrelated uh, to transport are needed in order to further conform, uh, confirm that we have a, a unconventional superconductivity. And here we consider two types of experiments. One is new SR, new spin scattering experiment. This was done in a Porcher Institute in Swiss, uh, Switzerland. This was done together with uh, Angelo Di Bernardo, who was a student of Jason and now uh, has a professorship position in uh, Constance and with uh, Zahel Salman. And also a uh, scanning squid uh, measurements, very initial results that were done in by, uh, with uh, Bina Kaliski. So I think maybe I want just to say a few words of uh, uh, what uh, low energy muon uh, rotation experiments are. So in PSI, they provide us uh, with the ability to inject uh, with a controlled energy uh, muons uh, from a uh, source into the uh, uh, superconductor and the penetration uh, depth essentially depends on the acceleration uh, voltage. But uh, of course the muons uh, for a single, uh, a given acceleration voltage uh, have a what's called a, a, start, a stopping distribution that we can calculate. And then when a muon is stuck, so um, a, it starts processing around the local magnetic field with the Lamont frequency given by uh, this well known formula. And the muon decay into uh, positrons in a direction which is preferential to the uh, positron. Uh, a spin a to the spin of the muon, but of course we have to take into account that there is uh, that the muons are not stable. The decay over about 2.2 microseconds uh, to this uh, positron. This is uh, about the time uh, window that uh, we can uh, perform the measurements. So overall, what we can see is a signal that uh, oscillates in a frequency, which is the Lamont frequency given by the local magnetic field, superimposed, of course, on the decay of the uh, uh, neutron, uh, of the uh, muon population. And uh, in the experiments, we have two detectors, a left one and a right one. And uh, what people usually measure, it's what's called the asymmetry signal. They take uh, the a difference between, for example, the left and right, normalized to the sum. And this is important because by this, we normalize out uh, the dependence of the mu and decay rate. And essentially the only time dependence is that we get is from the a localized field of the muons field. And uh, a, there is also a depolarization rate that uh, is uh, takes into, uh, that it results from uh, the inhomogeneity of the magnetic field in case it exists. And again, and also from the fact that uh, for a given energy, we see there is a spread of a uh, stopping uh, position. Okay, so now when we have this asymmetry signal, we fit it uh, to this uh, expression and we extract the localization, uh, the localized field and uh, the, the polarization rate. And uh, for example, above TC, so there is no depolarization rate at all. We see a single frequency uh, all over. As we go below TC, so 
uh, we see that uh, due to the topolarization, uh, we lose a signal. And of course, as we go deeper into the superconductor, so uh, also the frequency changes because the local field changes. Okay, so the configuration of the experiment is we have here the niobium cell uh, uh, sample. Uh, the muons are injected normal to that. Their spins are always uh, anti-parallel to the momenta, momentum. And the field in this case is uh, applied uh, a parallel to the film. And uh, when a muon is uh, stuck there, so it starts processing and we measure the signal. And we see that we have a very good uh, superconductor. Even after adsorption of uh, the molecules, we see a very sharp uh, transition at uh, 9.15K. And these are the stopping distributions a profile that uh, essentially we have calculated. And uh, I guess you all know that uh, for a conventional uh, superconductor with a symmetric boundary condition, so this is the profile that we expect. This is from the Ginzburg uh, Landau theory, a cosine hyperbolic uh, profile. But what we see now uh, with, with in our experience is the following. So, first of all, uh, above TC, you see these are the hollow uh, uh, circles here that we can see that both for the niobium and the chiral molecules on niobium sample, we see just the uh, external magnetic field as uh, one should expect. Now, when we go uh, below TC, in this case, it's a 2.8K. So now we see that the signal that we obtained uh, for the bare sample is significantly different from that, uh, the one we've found with the chiral molecule. In particular, we see that while the signal in the surface of uh, the superconductor for the bare niobium really coincides with the magnetic field. So in this case here, uh, with the car molecules, we have about a two a, a Gauss a reduction in the field. So we have an increased uh, diamagnetism at the surface. And if you, you hear, I saw a blow up of this region, we see also there is a crossover between uh, these uh, two behaviors. So something happens not only on the surface, something unconventional happens also to the uh, screening currents uh, uh, after adsorption of these uh, chiral molecules. And if we look uh, also now at the depolarization rate, sigma, so also we, uh, we see that maybe they, in general, they behave uh, the same, but also we see that there is a vastly different uh, uh, values of the depolarization for the bare niobium sample or for the niobium sample with the car molecules uh, adsorbed on top. So in order to try to make sense out of that, so- Try we, to finish if you want to have the time for questions. I, I have to finish now. Yeah, try to wrap it up. Okay, maybe let me just, uh, uh, okay, so may, maybe let me, so I didn't calculate the time. So maybe I'll just uh, very fastly. So we made a calculation together with uh, Linda uh, and, uh, and uh, his uh, uh, student. And we found that uh, we can uh, more or less uh, uh, qualitatively at least uh, mimic, uh, rep uh, reproduce our result. Then we made what's called the global fit of uh, these uh, data, uh, which again fit quite, uh, quite well the single energy points. And maybe I'll still show a zero field result that we have obtained. And again, what we saw that in this case, we see that there is a depolarization rate that uh, at a, not at TC, but below TC, we see an enhancement. This was also presented in one of the talks uh, yesterday. And uh, now this increase does not happen at uh, TC, which is 8.7, something here, but below, but this reminds us also of the same uh, effect, uh, effect that we found uh, in the, the data that I showed you before, that below the uh, TC, this unconventional superconducting order uh, arises. So, and I think we have your evidence for broken time reversal symmetry because this is a hallmark for broken time reversal symmetry in a sample that there is no applied the magnetic field at all. So let me skip uh, these results and this is my summary. And I'm sorry for uh, not keeping on time and uh, thank you for your attention and uh, I'll wait for your uh, questions.